It is a beautiful morning. I'm at the River Garden. It's May 20th. It's around 10 a.m. and it's about 70 degrees already. So it's been pretty warm and I haven't been here in a couple of weeks. So I want to show you what's growing. And let's go ahead and head down here. And also I want to show you real quick before we head down there, off to my right. You'll notice I have a couple of little flower boxes there. And in there I have planted nasturtiums. Now before we get down to the garden, I was just talking from the deck, and here in front of the deck are some blackberry bushes that my father-in-law planted. And so they are blooming and they are looking really good. So we'll just start over here in the left corner, and this is where my chives are, and then I'll just kind of zigzag my way through. So here are my chives, and they've been blooming pretty much all through May. So right here behind the chives are sweet potatoes, and I planted these about, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. And the leaves look a little bit yellow. I think a little light frost came through here, so it may have affected them, but we'll just see if they recover. I hope they do. And I think I have four bush varieties and one vining. And um, so I gave a trellis to the vining one because I don't want it to take over the bed, because they will tend to do that, and I don't have a... Uh, season that's long enough for the vine to root down and uh, make more sweet potatoes because if you have a vining sweet potato it can root down and create a lot of sweet potatoes but because I don't um, have enough room or a long enough growing season it takes about a hundred days for sweet potatoes uh, I'm just going to trellis it and I'll just harvest whatever's produced from this one slip okay now over here to the left I have an echinacea plant and this is a beautiful purple cone flower, and I showed y'all how I like to grow those. And be warned, they reseed like crazy. So you can plant them once, and you'll probably have them forever if you want to. And I love them. I think they're beautiful, and they attract a lot of pollinators. And then right behind the sweet potatoes, in this little square here, I have some uh, gray shallots. About five or six of those, along with um, a hybrid tomato plant that I'm just going to trellis up the little iron trellis there and I always do like to grow at least one real resistant um, hybrid tomato plant because they always produce so well so those of you who are new gardeners if you um, are watching a YouTube video and you see someone just harvesting buckets and buckets of tomatoes a lot of times that's because it's one of those um, hybrids that has a lot of disease resistance not all the time but um, a lot of times that's a really good um, tomato for a new gardener and I think that one's like um, <clears throat> Better Boy or Beef Master or something like that and you can look up disease resistance on some of the different seed company websites I'll leave that below the video if you'd like to uh, do a little bit of research on that so right here beside the tomato plant I have salsify and I'm growing that from seed I tried to do that last year uh, in my home native soil garden and they did not germinate for me so I put out a lot of seeds over here and I think I have about four or five that have come up so I'm looking forward to that one I always like to try to grow something new every year and then on this side of the tomatoes and sweet potatoes I have um, a squash it's called a candy roaster and my mother-in-law said that her mom who lived in these mountains grew this a lot and it's a really sweet um, squash. It's like a winter squash and it's supposed to be sweeter than a pumpkin. And it's so sweet that you don't even need to add sugar apparently to when you make pies with it. And so it's a real old-fashioned heirloom. I um, had to search hard to find this because I showed pictures to my mother-in-law and she said that um, most of those did not, re most of the ones that I showed her did not resemble what she grew up eating. And when I found one, finally she knew that's the one, that was the one. So I ordered the seeds and they have germinated great. I'll thin these out so I only have one because they it will need room to grow. And then next to it on the left I have red vein sorrel. And then right back here I have, um, it looks like a, something has reseeded. I have a couple of things that looks like may have reseeded so I didn't pull those out. It might be a tomatillo and then maybe an old potato. <laughs> and then so I have Behind that, I'm going to grow up the arch some greasy beans, but something is eating my greasy beans early this year, so I don't know what that is. I may have to replant those. 
So let's head over to the back corner here. And in the front with the little yellow flowers is another candy roaster plant. And so I actually started that one indoors. So it's much further along than the other one, which will be fine because that will give me um, a succession planting. So when that one's producing all of its squash, the other one will probably just start to produce its squash. So they're planted about three weeks apart, three to four weeks apart. Okay, another tomato plant here in front of a trellis. This is a Cherokee purple. Behind the Cherokee purple tomato plant here in the back corner, I'm planting a lot of peppers. And a lot of these are growing from seed, specifically a Spanish mammoth pepper. They get huge. Um, the Quadrado, which is a red bell pepper, a wonderful pepper. It did right out here last year. And so I have one eggplant in here that I started from seed um, earlier in the spring or maybe it was late winter and so I'm going to add some more out here this weekend while I'm here I want to put probably at least nine pepper plants in here so I brought a lot more for me I'm gonna to try to find space in this garden for them so that's what I have right now so here in the center this is the strawberry patch and it's kind of gone crazy on me <laughs> it's huge and there are a lot of strawberries in there they are very tiny which I expected because there's just so many plants and um, I'm trying to, when I see a runner coming off of a strawberry plant, I'm trying to clip them off. Uh, I, eventually I would like to just thin this out, but since I don't live here, I'm just gonna kinda let it grow and do its own thing. At some point, I'll probably thin it out so I have just a few nice mature strawberry plants, maybe about 12 or 16 in here instead of 100. <laughs> and then that way they will produce nice mature big strawberries but I love the small ones too they are so sweet they are just beautiful and I'll just take a few pictures of them for you so you can see and right here in the strawberry patch I don't know if you can see it or not but it, there's a French tarragon plant in there it's trying to survive so um, because the strawberries are just kind of taking over <laughs> and then next to that I'll show you right here on the archway is a beautiful little tomato I haven't grown it in a long time. It's called an Uncle Mark Bagby, and I had about three seeds left, and I've had them for about, I know, at least eight years because I grew it in Florida, and I haven't reordered any since, and so, but it came, they all, I think two of them came up of the three, and so I'm putting one at my home garden and one out here, so we'll see how they do. It's a pretty picky little tomato. It's an heirloom, and I don't think it has much disease resistance, but um, the tomatoes, I remember them being very good, so I'm going to try that one. That one's a potato leaf variety. It's not just the regular tomato. And on the other side of the arch here is another Cherokee purple, the best um, probably tomato on the planet. <laughs> if you have not ever grown or tasted a Cherokee purple tomato, it is absolutely wonderful. I love them. So that Cherokee purple is there on the right, and then the rest are basically um, just herbs. I did stick a nap of cabbage in here. We'll see how it does. It looks like it's getting some slug damage. Um, and so I have wonderful oregano off to the left here, and it is just looking beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then in the middle, I cut back my sage the last time I was here because it was um, brown and just not looking too good. That's there in the center behind the Napa cabbage. And then off to the right is my huge lemon thyme plant, which I love, love, love the lemon thyme. So um, those are some herbs for you here on this side of this back bed. And then on the front side of this garden, I have another Napa cabbage. The lemon thyme is behind it. And I have put a nasturtium in here as well, right there in front of the Napa cabbage. So in my front right here, I have the Napa cabbage, two of those. I have an onion that just reseeded from last year. So in the middle of this bed, I have a zucchini, and I put two seeds in here. They both came up, so I'll thin those out, so I just have one there. And I'm also planting watermelon here from seed. So there's my watermelon. I'll thin the, that out so there's just one there. And it's a beautiful little watermelon. I grew it last year, and I think it's a, called a Thai watermelon. I forgot the full name of it, but I got it from Baker Creek Seeds. And it's just a, looks like a crimson sweet, but it's very tiny and, and really sweet. So I'll leave a link below the video so you can check that out if you like. And then some more greasy beans here on the front arches of the garden. Behind that, I have 
some more echinacea and I think I also stuck a little nasturtium in there in the corner of the bed as well and then here in the corner of my asparagus bed just because I did not have room I stuck a Brussels sprout plant so we'll see how that does and then I really enjoyed the asparagus the two times I visited in the spring I was able to grab a few stalks but most of it grown its little fronds and so uh, they will be up all summer I'll cut them back late in the fall so that's the back river native soil garden and so I want to show you my square foot garden next that's in the front of the house by the kitchen window okay so it's May 21st and it has been raining all day I wanted to do a little garden tour for you today and um, just so you could see how everything is growing However, I'm not going to be able to walk around in the rain. So I'm going to just take some pictures here from my porch and you will hear some car noise because we are kind of close to a road out here in the front of the house. But um, I'm going to just take some pictures from um, above so you guys can see what I've planted. And I need to do a, um, a quick harvest of some radishes. I also want to plant some more green beans and keep a succession planting going while I'm here. So right down here in the first bed, I planted two tomatoes there in the back of the bed. One of them is called a sweet pea currant, and they're real tiny little tomatoes. I just love them. And I think the other one that I planted is a little um, Greek tomato. It's real sweet. I'm not real sure without being over there. And then there's some lettuce in that bed as well. And then I have a lot of dill that just reseeded from last year. And I have a nasturtium plant too. So off to the left, I have my chives, which are blooming. They look really nice. There's a lot of dill in that bed as well. A parsley plant. I have some potatoes, and I have some radishes. I'm going to grab those, and then I'm going to plant some green beans behind them. And then I have a tomato plant there. I think I have two tomato plants in that bed. I'm just not real sure from here. Um, and so let me go ahead and grab those radishes real quick. And I'm going to throw some green beans in the uh, soil along with a little bit of compost. Okay, so I just harvested the um, radishes and then I planted one square of green beans. And I showed y'all how to um, sow your green beans in a square foot garden a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave a link to that video if you missed it. And so here are the radishes that I just harvested. So back in the corner bed, I have some potatoes. They look like they're doing very well. I think those are red thumb potatoes. I popped in two tomato plants. I have a Thai pink egg um, tomato plant, which is a really good little tomato. And I think I have another one of those Uncle Mark Bagby tomatoes over there. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, also in this bed, I planted um, about four different varieties of basil this weekend. Um, also, I have some onions that I planted earlier in the spring. And I have two cucumber plants in there as well that I've just uh, recently planted. And basically in these other two beds I have a lot of spinach, turnip greens, lettuce, another parsley plant, some green onions, and then I um, planted some more green onions this weekend so that I'll have a continual supply. Um, and then I have some more potatoes. I have some cilantro as well and that would be right down here and then in the bed down below the porch is where I planted my green beans for you a couple of weeks ago and they are up um, I had to put a trellis on top of there because there was a squirrel digging in my beds and so I've lost some of my green, green bean plants but maybe I can stick this over a little bit and you can see so I've saved some room for some more plantings throughout my garden you see that it's not full and that's because I'm going to come back and do some more uh, carrot planting, green onion plantings, and green beans. But back here in this corner of this bed right here are carrots. And they're up in the upper left corner. And they're doing pretty good. And also I'm going to show you a tip as well. You see there's a downspout right there. So at the end of the downspout I planted an eggplant. And that way, because I'm not here to water my garden, um, this way those plants that really need a lot of water like your squashes, zucchinis, cucumbers, if you can plant those at the base of a, at a downspout then they'll receive a lot more water than your other plants. I planted a zucchini there last year. It did great. So this year I have a little, um, I think it's called a Thai white ribbed eggplants. 
so that's what's there this year. Now in the center I have some oregano in there along with a rosemary plant and I stuck a cabbage in there because I didn't have anywhere else to put it and I think I have a garlic in there and then I planted out some sunflowers this uh, weekend so those will be up and doing nice in June and July I like to plant those right in the center there because they offer a little bit of sh afternoon shade to my bed that's towards the house anyway it helps my spinach and some of my cooler season vegetables to get that afternoon shade and so those mammoth sunflowers are like trees almost <laughs> And it also is real pretty from the inside of my kitchen. So that when I look out the kitchen window, I'll see, you know, sunflowers. And I also plant zinnias there as well. So there are the gardens here at the river. If you have any questions about what I planted, just let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help you. Thanks so much for watching, and y'all have a beautiful day.